This is another video in the Fundamental of Electrical Circuits uh, series. Um, this time we're going to talk about Kirchhoff's Law, which is uh, uh, the most important law right after Ohm's Law to Electrical Engineers. And uh, uh, Kirchhoff's uh, Law, actually we have two Kirchhoff's Law to be exact. Um, the, the one we're going to talk about here is KCO or Kirchhoff's current law. In a future video, we're going to talk about KVO, which is another uh, of uh, Kirchhoff's law. Both are um, very important and in many cases can be used interchangeably, but in certain environment, one is a lot easier than the other. Let's, let's turn our focus on KCL. Um, KCL, basically what it's telling us is that if we have a bunch of mm, mm, branches coming together, and let's say um, look maybe like this, if you will, um, and whatever else, uh, it basically tells us that um, no current will be stored, no current will be stored in this node. So any current that comes in must leave the node. So let's give it an example. So let's say, let's say for whatever reason we know that three amp is coming in here, and we know that two amp is going this way. By definition, by definition of the Kirchhoff's law, since nothing can be stored here, whatever current comes in here has got to go out of here. Therefore, this has to be one amp. So, so, so each one of these lines that carry things out are referred to as a branch. This is referred to as a node. And since there is more than two connections to this node, this is referred to as an essential node. So a node is when only uh, two or more items are coming. If it becomes three, then it becomes an essential node. So that's that. To make our life a little easier, what we're gonna do is we're gonna all agree that we always gonna assume current leaving the node is, this is the direction, the positive direction for the uh, node. So what, what am I basically saying is as saying, we're gonna go around the loop and just to make this go out, instead of being plus three amp, is going to be minus 3. These two are in the same direction, so that's going to be 1 amp, and this is going to be 2 amp. And actually, this kind of leads us to what the Kirchhoff's, for every node in your circuit, for every node in a circuit, we can simply say that sum of all the currents are equal to 0. And that's fundamentally what a Kirchhoff's law says. The way we apply it is, basically, here is a kind of a simplified version of uh, what a Kirchhoff's law is. First, let's go ahead and talk about it. Then what we're going to do, we're going to do an example and walk through it. So this, this tries to kind of summarize it for us. So this was the Kirchhoff's law, which says summation of all the current in each essential node is equal to zero. Whenever we have a resistor, we're going to use this V equal IR to convert it to an I, uh, convert that I uh, <clears throat> to a V. So, so basically, instead of writing it this way, um, we're gonna write that I is equal to V over R. And hopefully that becomes clear as we go down. So as far as the steps to solve a problem, analyze a problem, find a current using this method, first step you got to do, you got to identify all of the essential nodes. So remember, essential nodes are nodes with more than two, more than two branches coming to it. You set one of them to reference, assume it's zero. Yeah. And then for each of the other essential node, you write some of equations for those nodes, some of the current in those nodes and set them equal to zero. Um, so and then you solve the equation. The, Irony is that this is called a, uh, it's, it's, it's based on a KCL law, 
but the method and the equations you're going to end up has voltage in it. So let's let's try this and see if we can kind of work it through. Let's say let's say as an example, um, they ask us to find uh, find vx using um, k cl. Actually, kcl a better kcl. We can say using kcl. Or more formally, we really should be saying using node voltage method. That's a more formal name for using KCL. So let's take a look at this. So we've got a source. Let's say we put in a source here. We put in a resistor. We have another resistor here. We're not going to make this too too complicated. Another resistor here, maybe another resistor here. That's good enough. Um, so, so this is a circuit given to us. Let's say they got a five volt coming in. This is a ten ohm. This is twenty ohms, forty ohms, and let's say this is uh, forty ohms. So, uh, based on the KCL, we have to identify how many um, nodes we have. So let's see, how many nodes do we have? Uh, take a minute, you might wanna pause the video and find out if you can figure out how many nodes we have. Nodes are where branches come together. So one common, most people say this is a node, and for beginners, they might assume this is a node. It is not a node since these two have exactly the same voltage, these two are one node, okay? And then this is the other node. You see all of this is one node. So that was step one of identifying how many essential nodes we have. So the number of essential nodes is equal to two. Notice this one is a node because two branches are coming in, but they are not essential nodes. The next thing we gotta do, we gotta call one of them VREF and that red voltage is equal to zero, okay? And then the next thing we gotta do, we gotta give this voltage a name. For lack of better name, I'll call it V1. And by the way, I forgot to say what Vx was, so let's go ahead and call this one Vx for the time, okay? So now, how do I do it? Is this, what I have to do is I have to figure out what are all the currents that are leaving a node? So I gotta add whatever this current is. Let's call this one I1 plus I2 plus I3 plus I4. So my job is to, and it's really important for you to tell your reader that you're writing a KCL equation for V1 and that basically says that sum of all the i is equal to zero. In this case, it's i1 plus i2 plus i3 plus i4 equals to zero. Now, if I know that's the case, the question is, now, if I leave it at i, I've got four variables, it's not gonna work, but I know that i if I know the voltage across the resistor, then I is simply V over R. Let's start with the easy one. If you look at I4, for example, if I know what the voltage is across here, if I assume this is zero, and I assume this is V1, the voltage across the 40, this 40 would be V1 minus zero. So that's easy. So that's V1 minus zero divided by 40. And then, how about I3? I3 is the same, V1 minus that. V1 minus zero divided by 40. So now we got that. I2, now once we got the rhythm, I2 is pretty much the same because if I know the voltage here, and I know the voltage here is zero, then it's gonna be V1 minus one, the voltage difference in here. And uh, there we have it, V1 minus zero, divided by 20 plus. I1 is a little bit more tricky because even though I know the voltage here is V1, the voltage here is uh, zero, I need to know what the voltage is here. And in this particular case, I know if this is zero, 
I step in from negative to this, I'm going up from 0 to 5 volts. So here is a 5 volt. So in this particular case, it's going to be V1 minus 5 volts divided by 10. Okay, now all I have to do is find a common denominator for those. If I find a common, 40 is the common denominator, which means that I'm going to have basically 4V1 minus 520 plus 2V1 plus V1 plus V1 equal to 0, which means V1 is going to be, the 20 goes to the other side, becomes a positive 20. And I've got 1, 2, 4, and 4, 8. So I've got an 8 in here. And that's my V1. And when I look up there, V1 and Vx are the same because Vx is from here to here and V1 is from here to 0. So actually, this is Vx. And we are done. Again, it's really important that when you're doing this, you find out what all the essential nodes are. Essential nodes that when more than two branches come together, then you write the sum of currents for every node. So you write a KCL for every node, except for the reference, the one you picked and called zero. And then you solve it. Once you have a system of equation, you solve it, and there is your answer.